Greetings, fellow travelers. Today's topic is you become what you hunt. Becoming what we hunt is a concept that is, is shared in various arenas of life, if not all. For example, in the arena of man hunting an animal, the hunter's success relies on one's ability to think as the prey. In doing so, one can predict obstacles ahead, prepare for said obstacles, and achieve the desired outcome. We could look at the hunter that hunts deer. The hunter may look for tracks, what type of food that the deer forages for, how the deer searches for water resources, and these are just a few ideas. But as humans, we use this approach consciously and unconsciously. And for myself, that's intriguing. There's a quote that states, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Now, at a certain point in life, that, that held true. Uh, we can expand that thought now because in the digital age, there's so much more access to different ideas, thoughts, impressions, social media, things of that sort, right? So it's not just the five people that you expose yourself the most to, but the number can go to infinity if you like. The same premise holds so. That premise suggested one will inherently become what they consistently expose themselves to. It reminds me of the line, whatever we look for is looking for us. Whatever you're looking for is looking for you. Now, if we use that concept of hunting, just as a hunter identifies with the prey to ensure success, what one gives attention to in the world eventually becomes a guiding force to part of our self-identity. We become what we seek. Now, th this understanding really helped me grasp the power of attention over the course of my life. During uh, my teenage years, going into my early 20s, I worked. Did school, work, school, work. In my downtime, you know, I spend time with the fellas. We'll play video games. The game that we played the most was a basketball game, NBA 2K. And in that period of my life, I was taking in so much information from school, which I didn't really pay too much attention to. But I was also in barbering school. I was learning a trade, a skill. And then after I graduated high school, I was doing a culinary internship. So I'm learning two different skill sets, right? Barbering and chef culinary arts what I began to learn was how to think as a barber what I was learning in culinary school was how to think as a chef I have to think about how the food is prepared I have to think about what food should be prepared in what order the timing in barber school I'm learning about hair, different types of hair, different types of tools to cut the hair. I'm getting accustomed to thinking a certain way. Now, I bring up those two things because it showed me how to build a formula of thinking for myself. Now, with the video games, it was interesting. I went from being competitive with my peer group around me to getting a lot better, a lot faster. Now one would say, oh, it's just a video game. Okay. But for myself, I was exploring a skill set because that's what I was spending most of my days doing. So in that, in that learning experience, 
I became increasingly better than my peers. And then around that time, online gaming became a bigger thing. So I began to see more challenges and my strategy was challenged more. And I learned something else. That a video game is a simulation. It mimics real life, but it's not designed to replicate real life. Meaning everything that I see on ESPN, I'm not going to be able to do on the game. But what I did also learn and see and observe was when I took the time to shoot the same jump shot with the same timing at the same part of the court, I can control the outcome better by consistently doing the same thing. I was able to see the nuances. I was searching for a way to ensure the desired outcome. I became what I was hunting. The video game is ones and zeros. It's a computer program. So I began to play the game thinking as a computer program. It's not about this player is better than that player. No. It's about doing the same thing over and over. You begin to see what works time and time again. Going to another aspect of the same construct, the dating world. Men, men invest in nice clothes and cars so they can attract women. Men are hunting. Women are drawn to these objects. And the man understands the nature of what or who he is searching for and adjusts his approach accordingly to see successful desired outcomes. Now to bring all this forward to the overall concept, in order for us to enjoy our journeys or continue on our journeys, we must look forward. We must look ahead. We must be on the hunt. We must search. Because when one becomes stuck in a station of life, they begin to miss the forest for the trees. If searching is, and this is my thought, if searching is truly ingrained in us, then why not search for what we desire? Other travelers can tell you where they desire you to be, but where do you want to be? What do you want to explore? What journey do you want to take upon? What environment do you want to create? It's easy to climb a mountain and look down on those wishing to be where you are. But when you look too long, either they're going to make it to where you are or you're going to fall to where they are. When you reach that mountaintop, look up and out and see where you want to go next. At best, you will not only learn more about your own journey, but you might inspire others to do the same. These are thoughts to share at the moment. I look forward to speaking to you fellow travelers and sharing more insights. And hopefully, here's some insights of yours as well. Until then, be blessed.